Good morning and welcome to the Church of St. Luke and St. Matthew in Brooklyn, New York. This is a service of morning prayer on the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. My name is the Reverend Andrew Durbidge and it's a great privilege to welcome you to this service on behalf of the worshipping congregation. No matter where you are viewing this service from, uh, we hope that you will find a connection with God as we celebrate the movement of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Sing along and make joyful noise unto the Lord. May God bless you. I want to encourage you this coming week to participate in our new series called You Are the Future, a summer fellowship for justice and equality. Last week, we had two wonderful sessions and this week at 11 a.m. on Tuesday and Thursday will be two more sessions. We encourage all of you, no matter what age you are, to join in. And you can register for this really wonderful series at our parish website at www.stlukeandstmatthew.org. I really encourage you to be part of this conversation that is so important in our community to heal the many, 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 many wounds we have from our past. May God bless you this day, and may God bless all the days that lay before you.
Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. And we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The earth is the Lord's for he made it. Come, let us adore him. A reading from a portion of Psalm 17. Hear my plea of innocence, O Lord, Give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Weigh my heart, summon me by night. Melt me down, you will find no impurity in me. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast to the ways of your law. In your paths, my feet shall not stumble. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand, from those who rise up against them. But at my vindication, I shall see your face. When I awake, I shall be satisfied, beholding your likeness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The same night... Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. 
So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. The Word of the Lord. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember his name as exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise, glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away, and give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said to them, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. You give them something to eat. 
Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 16. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in the sight of the Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, even as I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As a Ghanaian, and for that matter, an African, I like telling stories and listening to stories. I crave your indulgence to listen to just one, and one only story. Six men born blind, head of an elephant in a nearby zoo. They had heard that it is the largest or the biggest of all the animals walking on the earth. Filled with anxiety, they went to see the elephant. When they got there, each started touching the elephant. The first held the tail. The second held one of its legs. The third touched the stomach. The fourth held the trunk. The fifth touched the ear. And the sixth touched the tusk. On their way back home, each expressed his experience. The one who touched and held on to the tail exclaimed, Oh, I see. The elephant is just like a big rope. The second who touched the leg disagreed with the first, exclaiming, The elephant is like a big tree. The third blind man who had touched the stomach interjected, Wow, what are you people talking about? The elephant I saw is like a huge wall. The fourth man who touched the trunk jumped in and said, Wait a minute, which elephant did you people go to see? The one I saw is like a big water hose. The fifth one who touched the ear laughed. He laughed loudly and exclaimed, The elephant I saw is like a big fan. Having waited patiently for his turn, the sixth blind man who touched the task shouted, You are all wrong. The elephant I saw is like a trumpet. Dear sisters and brothers, this story tells us one thing, and it is that truth is one. But there can be many facts which go into truth. Facts can change depending upon circumstances, but truth doesn't. It is true that the elephant on the land is the biggest animal, but we are told that the whale in the sea is a bigger mammal than the elephant. A big animal has big parts. Therefore, each of the six blind men was stating facts about the truth. All together make the elephant. In just the same way, our mindset about the human race must be based on truth, and that is life first, right second. Life from the Creator God to each one of us is what makes us loving and living souls. The body exists and performs any kind of function because there is life in it. As soon as that life leaves the body, a major chapter comes to an end. 
No dead body fights for its right. As long as we are alive, we can fight for our right. We can defend our right. And I here I refer to the First Amendment and the Second Amendment. But then, the bottom line is, we must first be alive. And then, whatever follows, follows. Jesus once exclaimed, I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 10. In, this, in his attempt to make people have life and have it in abundance, he went about preaching, teaching, and healing. His appealing leadership, his appealing leadership skills drew more people to himself. Hence, the great crowd going to him at a lonely place after he had withdrawn from popular places of action on, account, on an account of the brutal killing of John the Baptist by King Herod. Jesus was at a lonely place with the disciples, but he was not left alone. The people came to him in droves to listen to him. He did not complain, nor did he make any attempt to desert the crowd. Instead, he received them and taught them for hours. And as our gospel for the day says, the disciples began to feel uncomfortable with the presence of such a large group of people at a lonely place that had no supporting facili facilities. When they tried to prevail on him to send the crowd away on account of food sustenance, he gave them the shock of their lives with our text for meditation. You give them something to eat. This expression is captured in all the synoptic gospels, the three synoptic gospels, Matthew 14, 16, Mark 6, 37, and Luke 9, 13. No matter what kind of interpretation one puts on the feeding of the 5,000 men and more by Jesus, one cardinal truth stands out very clearly, and it is this, the needs of humanity is a concern of the, God, of the God who created us. The needs of humanity is the concern of the God who created us. Jesus showed that concern, Jesus showed that concern first by making himself available, and making use of all available resources, and second, by bringing about hope into a situation that seemed gloomy, and third, by teaching the lesson that all things are possible with God. You give them something to eat, Jesus told his disciples. And so it came to pass that he blessed the resources available to them at that hour, five loaves, of fish, five loaves and two fish. One may ask, when did the loaves and the fish begin to multiply? Was it from the hands of Jesus to the disciples or from the hands of the disciples to the people, the multitude? All that we read of in Holy Scriptures is that a miracle did occur. All the people had enough with some leftovers. Sisters and brothers, the same Jesus is with us now. The book of Hebrews would declare, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, verse 8. The eternal presence of the divine in the life of humanity is truth 
that can, cannot and must not be contested nor denied. The incarnational word is with us. You and I are being directed by the same God through the leadership of church and state to make good use of the resources available to us as we fight together the COVID-19 pandemic. All the safety health protocols available to us must be used judiciously. Face mask, social or physical distancing, hand washing, and using of hand sanitizer. As we diligently observe such protocols, we together help to bring about hope for a better future. And that is my second point. Oh yes, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. Humanity is gen in general does not have to die in thousands because of COVID-19 due to our own carelessness. One of the good news that God gave to humanity in the creation story of Genesis chapter 1 is to have dominion over creation. Why then must we allow COVID-19 to have dominion over us? All because we are insisting on our right. We are preoccupied with the economy. We are insisting on having good time with our friends, all at the expense of our lives. We need to do so searching. Sisters and brothers, there is time for everything. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Good times will soon come to replace the current gloomy one. For the God of the mountain is the same God of the valley. Thirdly, and finally, in allowing God to direct us through our leaders, we shall always come to the realization that all things are possible with God. Our Long Island Diocesan Task Force, chaired by our Bishop Diocesan Lawrence Provenzano, together with the other bishops and the clergy and lay and the supporting team, has been working tirelessly to keep all of us safe within the context of the New York State safety protocols. The signs are positive. New York State, that used to be the epic center of the COVID-19 pandemic in the whole world, is now seen as one of the safe, if not the safest places in the United States of America. Oh, all praise and thanks to God Almighty for giving our New York State a dynamic leadership in the persons of Governor Andrew Como and Mayor de Blasio and their team. We also thank God for our doctors, nurses, pharmacists, and all paramedical personnel who are working day in and day out to make us strong and smile at every storm in our lives. Yes, indeed, dear people of God, we can do all things in Christ who strengthens us. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I know this through my own personal experience in my few years here in the United States of America. My very, very good experiences in the parish of St. Augustine Episcopal Church on Avenue D and St. Gabriel's Episcopal Church on Hawthorne Street. The good people take good care of each other. 
and I know it. And I know we can do it. With my relationship with Bishop of the diocese and all other bishops in the diocese and other clergy and dear ones, I believe strongly that we are better placed to hold ourselves together and make this gloomy picture pass over once and for all. Because united we stand, divided we fall. Our dear sister Janet Adam and Dennis Filion, who together with all the other team on the diocesan of, uh, office, in the diocesan office, have worked very hard. And it is a joy to be in the midst of such good people. Our Lord Jesus Christ is oftentimes referred to as the Lion of Judah and also as the Lamb of God in Holy Scriptures. When it comes to the truth, Jesus roars like a lion. But when it comes to caring for the people, Jesus is as humble and gentle as a lamb. We may have our differences in terms of how we see life, and for that matter, how we approach life. But in all, we need to pursue the truth that life is a priceless commodity we cannot bargain for. We ought to be reminded constantly that our diversity is our strength and our unity is our power. Therefore, dear sisters and brothers, let us try to be as wise as serpents and as gentle as thou. May God Almighty bless us all in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together in reciting the Apostles' Creed, Lord's Prayer and Suffrages. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all peoples. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such a blessing for, through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favour, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all that we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. O God, the God of all goodness and grace, who is worthy of a greater love than we can either give or understand, fill our hearts as we ask you with such love toward you that nothing may seem too hard for us to do or to suffer in obedience to your will. And grant that in loving you, we may become daily more like you and finally obtain the crown of life which you have promised to those who love you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, that your spirit may permeate every sphere of human act, thought and activity. Let those who believe in you take with them into their daily life and work the values of the kingdom, the insights of the gospel and the love for their neighbour. Hasten the time when justice and true community shall be established and when all people shall be brought into unity with you, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart within this land that barriers that divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Now we offer the prayers of those that have left their prayers in the book in the Chapel of Hope. We pray for the person who is seeking financial help and strength to enable them to hold on to their house. We pray for the person who is seeking their Lord's help so that they can make it through this time. We pray for the person who has left a message that uh, they hope that the church space is made available for all those who are displaced. We pray for the gentleman that lives on our street that cares for the stray cats. He prays that God may bless them as he loves them and as he loves our Lord. And we pray for the person that left a donation in this prayer book in the Chapel of Hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that you may bless those that come into our Chapel of Hope. We pray that you may care for them, watch over them and comfort them in their life's journey. We pray, Lord God, that the Chapel of Hope may, pro may provide a small space of solitary connection with you a place to offer a prayer and to light a candle for the loved ones uh, in their lives. 
Lord, may you care for them, watch over them and continue to bless all who come across the threshold of our church. We pray all this through your holy name. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.